What is the build step in Jenkins? Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.387.3. On this controller, I have three jobs. I have a primary job and I have two other jobs that will be called from primary. So before we take a look at these jobs, let's go take a look at the documentation for the build step. The link to this documentation is down in the description. And with the build step, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be triggering a new build for a given job. So number one, we're going to be triggering a build. And number two, the job that we're triggering has to exist. So we cannot trigger a non-existent build. Sort of makes sense. So we have multiple parameters that we can set up. Obviously, the one required one is job. So we would specify the job name for job. Now notice also that you can use relative paths or you can also use absolute paths. Optionally, we can add parameters, we can choose to propagate, we have a quiet period, or we can wait or wait for start. All of these different parameters are all optional. So let's go over and take a look at our job. What I have is a primary job. If we take a look at the primary job, we have two stages. We have a first stage that's going to build job one. Think about the build documentation. We have to specify a job. We have a second stage to where we're just going to echo out second stage. And also in our post section on success, we're also going to call job two. Now, if we go take a look at job one and job two, they're both very similar. And at this point, they're both just doing an echo for whichever job they are. So in this case for job one, we're echoing out job one. The other one echoes out job two. So let's go ahead and go back over to our primary job and click on build now. And as the job starts up, what we'll see is we're scheduling project job one. So it found job one. In fact, I could even click over to job one and I can see that job one is running. I can take a look at the output. We see the echo of job one, but we can also see that it was started by the upstream project primary job for build number five in this case. So if we go back over to build number five and go to console output, then we're back into the log file for primary job run number five. So we can see that we scheduled job one, it started, it completed successfully. Then we echoed out the second stage. And then finally for our success, we ran job two. We can see that job two was job run three and overall everything finished successfully. Now think back a moment to what primary job actually looks like. If we take a look at the definition of the pipeline, we have a call to job one, we echo out second stage, and then we build job two. Well, let's change what job one actually does. So we'll go over to job one and we'll edit the pipeline. And in this case, we're just going to change the SH to an error, fail this run. So what we expect with this is as job one executes, it's going to throw an error and we should expect primary job to fail. We won't see the run for a second stage. And since our post is only on success, we expect that to fail as well. So let's see what happens. We'll go back over to primary job, click on build now. And if we watch the output for job run six, we'll see that it scheduled job one, but then we see that it failed. Since the run for job one failed, we skipped the second stage. And since the post was only for success, we can also see that we skipped all the way out of that. So at this point, the overall job is failed. But let's assume for a moment that even if job one fails, we want the pipeline to go ahead and continue running. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back into the configuration for our job and let's go over to pipeline syntax. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be changing how build runs for job one. So go to pipeline syntax, we'll change this to build. In this case, we're gonna be still building job one. We're still gonna wait for completion, but we are not going to propagate errors. So basically we're just gonna be swallowing that error as the job runs and then continuing on. So if we click on generate pipeline script, we'll get the new syntax that we need. What we can see here is we have propagate set to false and we're setting the job name to job one. So let's go back over to our job. We're gonna change our build for job one to include the propagate faults and specify the job of job one. So click on save and click on build now. If we take a look at the output for this run, we see that we're scheduling job one. We can see that job one actually failed. So we see the failure, but then because we had propagate set to false, our second stage runs. And since the overall primary job was successful, then our post success, we still went ahead and ran job two, and overall, the job is marked as success because we did not propagate the error out of job one. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. 
And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBeast TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBeast TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.